How is it going, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, very exciting to be here today. Um, so uh, it is the month of the woman, ladies and gentlemen. It is the month of the woman. And, you know, I I told Misha this because I felt kind of like, I guess, vulnerable. But um, when a uh, month of the woman, usually what I do is I sculpt my muff yeah. into the image of Frida Kahlo. Picture it. Picture it. Wait till she auctions it off. <laughs> yes. And in studio today, I have with me my very good friend, Dana Eagle. Uh, my guest has appeared on NBC's Last Comic Standing, the late, late show Comedy Central, Comics Unleashed, where she became a contributing writer. She got her start in musical theater, but was asked to leave. Yeah. Please welcome Dana Eagle. Dana, Thank how's it going, you. pal? It's going very well. I'm very happy to be here. I... Uh... <laughs> I love this audience. Uh, not a lot of people very accepting of the gay bipolar Jew with a lazy eye, but you guys are. <laughs> and she's here. She's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I did want to just share uh, uh, with my pal uh, that she's an author as well. How to be dress depressed, a guide. I got to tell you, when you wrote this book, you wrote it when? What was it? When I had cancer. Cancer. So being depressed, like... Uh, by the way, mental illness, uh, much more difficult than physical. But um, <laughs> uh, when I wrote it, 2017, 2018, maybe, mm -hmm. it was published in four languages, none of which I speak. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dana. And I brought you here today because it is the month of the woman. And I just think this is really funny. Do you have your shrink on speed dial? Yeah. I mean, that in itself, that I feel those are words of wisdom. All right, here yeah. we gonna go. Uh, I, you know, how I have a thing for the view. I, I have a thing for the view. I really do. Ah, oh, these girls and their fashion statements and their fucking high heels, or, you know, they don't give a flip about making sense. I love this show. So here we go. This was a couple weeks ago. Samantha B was a guest on the show. And I just wanna show a quick clip of this uh, to share. Uh, so your favorite woman, yes, your favorite woman, yes. is your first national tour. You mm -hmm. say you yes. wanted to remind people that women are magical. They and are. quote, despite what six Supreme Court justices <laughs> and your Instagram feed seem to think. That's unquote. right. So <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, I just mean it feels like, I mean, I'm sure you all feel it. I'm sure a lot of people in this audience feel it. It's feeling a little treacherous to be a woman right now. It feels like we're being attacked in such creative oh. and interesting ways. Well, yeah. So I wanted to, I always knew that when the show would end, yes. my next move what would, would it probably be? be to kind what? of express myself in a in a live capacity. Oh. So it feels like the world is... Okay, I, I, when she says in a live capacity, what is she could possibly go for right like it's live right now all her shows were live she's they, telling you to buy tickets she wants she, you to buy tickets oh, to this damn tour. buy tickets to the tour bitches yeah, yeah. all right look, we're going to continue okay kind of conspiring to make it the perfect yeah. time frame to land this show in so it's well, going to be a really it's going to be fun night for women and the men who love the women oh man well, about the women who love the women i know about the women who love the women yeah what about them does yeah. it doesn't sound like she gave a shit about those women no. sorry girls sorry about that that's where the magic happens yeah so <laughs> the magic I, there's something magical about women you know i do love that yes oh yeah yeah, I mean, having two periods in Women's Month has made me feel very magical. <laughs> All right, now, Sunny, you know how I feel about Sunny. Oh, she's she's constantly on a sedative, and uh, oh wait, can we go? You want to go back a little bit? What's well, when she starts? She All right, she here we says, go. Uh, "Here we go." It feels. All right, let's do this. I see them move. There we go. Feeling treacherous. All right, let's see. Oh, oh, I just so embarrassing I when that's just repeated when it. that. No, no, we're going to get uh, this so right that I didn't get it right. Be Come on, to kind of express myself oh, in a, in a well, this continue. Capacity. And so it feels like you tell me when the to stop. world is kind of conspiring to make it the perfect yeah. time frame to land this perfect. show. In. So it's well, going to be a really she she started out by saying it. Fe it feels like really treacherous time. Well, first of all, there we go. The women and their feelings again. Yeah. But, oh, my. <laughs> wah, wah. Right. Oh, well. uh, and then she was like, it's it's feeling like a really treacherous time to be a woman. And I'm like, did you just 
transition to being a woman like <laughs> just now she feels like a really treacherous time to be a woman now yeah and it's like just now just now she didn't go to junior high yeah oh those junior high years fun oh. fun for all of us i mean come on the bottom line is everybody got bullied everybody got bu the bully obviously was bullied by somebody you know so Okay, some of us were bullied by the teachers. Yeah, and yeah. some of some of us were the teachers. Hold on. Oh, what? stop it. Here we go. Night for women and the men who love the women. Oh. Oh, I like that part. I like that part. Yeah. Well, you be like, you become such a strong advocate and really yeah. a voice for women. Uh, so thank you so much, especially when it. Oh, she has been a voice for women. You know, today I feel on The View, it's like they're all loving the women. And I just, I, you know, one of my friends told me about this clip. Uh, here's another nice moment about Samantha B being for the women. After decades of ignoring the issue, Americans are finally paying attention. Oh. Well, most of us, Ivanka I Trump, wasn't. who works at the White House, uh -oh, chose to post the second most oblivious tweet we've seen this week. You know, Ivanka, that's a beautiful photo of you and your child. But let me just say, one mother to another, do something about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless cunt. He listens to you. Ho, ho. Come on. I thought you that word back. Right? So you own that word. No, own it. I, she can't be a cunt. I want her to be a cunt. Uh, you know what? You are. You right. are. I have a few more moments of this segment to prove that. To <laughs> you. Yes, you do. Um, but I guess that's what Samantha B means when she talks about, you know, this uh, environment <laughs> of w women hate. It's all right. It's all right. Ivanka can handle it. She, it's being you know. treacherous for Ivanka. <laughs> I think Ivanka's okay. I, th I think she can live with it. All yeah. right. Um, so here is the final question they had for Samantha. I, I didn't go through the whole video for you. Oh, okay. Uh, but here's the, the final segment. Here we go. So you were the first woman, actually, mm -hmm. to host a late night satire show with yes. Ivanka. Yes. I don't get that. I don't get how she was the first woman. I guess the first woman, it was the name of her show. Even though Joan Rivers had a, a show, she was the first woman? I don't understand. I, I don't think Rivers m made it through a season, though. I, I think she was the first on late, like to be a late night host. Okay. She was the first to be the are late you, night host. Are you counterdicking me? Uh, no, I'm countercunting you. Oh, bravo. Thank I you. mean, bravo. Thank Here you. we go. Seven seasons. It's pretty great. It won two Emmys Holy along shit. the way. Yeah. Thank and now you. that it's no longer on the air, Ooh. we checked. Uh -oh. We're left with just two women. Yep. Uh, in late night, we've got Amber mm -hmm. Ruffin and yep. we've got Z Way. And they're great. And then we, we've got a sea of, of men. They're, they're generally white men. Generally. I think they're all white men right now. Right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why is it still so hard for women to break into late night and stay? <laughs> um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> because they watch the view. <laughs> right? Some executives like, oh. watch the view. And went, um, no, this isn't going to work. You know, I was talking to a friend. I was like, well, oh, is that the bar? And so, so, oh my God, there's not a woman lady talk show host in the late night. Who are those shows so great to aspire to in the first place? And I'm, I, I have to say this. I don't care that they're men. And I know, I, I get it. All right. There's a male dominated society, but there's whatever. You know, that kind of stuff drives me crazy. But they are paid more. They have those primetime spots and everybody pays more for them. Uh, so I'll go on whatever time, but we just want that equal that sweet, or sweet better money. than pay. Well, yeah. You know, that's interesting that you brought that up because Whoopi Goldberg, I believe, makes $8 million on The View. Joy Behar makes $7 million. And they're upset that Tucker makes ten. I can see it. I understand, you know. For yeah. every dollar. <laughs> All right, continue. If I had a dollar for every time, I, really, I don't know. I really don't know. The landscape, you know, everyone was very hopeful about the landscape. It doesn't seem to change all that much. It's men I mean, making the decisions. That's one of the reasons. That is, it, and it they really think is. that young boys yeah. are watching late night more than women do. I mean, I watched Johnny Carson until I was, I don't yeah. know how old, but yeah. that's, it's their, it's is their that decisions. What it is? You want to think yeah. like that the gatekeepers have changed, but they really haven't. Things haven't changed all that much. You just yeah. have to keep bushing. Just yeah. keep pushing.
pushing. Just keep we pushing. Tried years ago with Joan Rivers to really keep break pushing. through, but then it didn't, it didn't work. work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an issue. Okay. It's an issue. All right, wrap it up. We're on to the next thing. Dana, any closing remarks about this baloney? Joan Rivers pushed a lot, and people are like, she's too pushy. So, you know, I I suffer from that, uh, what's it, like that inner misogyny, like adapting the values of the uh, disgusting animals I was raised by. <laughs> and uh, so, I, yeah, I I get it. The... Uh, the, the they don't they don't like what we're selling. You know what? I just what I would I would contend that, you know, right now um the, I you got the Wild Wild West on YouTube. You've got the Wild Wild West on all these That's other true. all these other elements that, you know, they're not a part of that. They're not in that stratosphere and there're no gatekeepers on YouTube. There are, but you know what I'm saying that, you know, if you have a stick to itness, you're going to be able to celebrate being a woman, bitches. Come on, month of the woman. Right. And also, yeah, because all the networks now, they're they're dying. They're going to be extinct soon. They're just all trying, like, they're all on YouTube now. Yeah. So, you the, know, they're yeah. in the queue. So anyways, there's a lot of gatekeepers in Hollywood. Get it. You know, I've existed in that world. But, so, you know, long story short is there are other avenues now. There, there are, are other avenues. So don't give up, girls. And don't give up, fellas. All right. Only fans. We have only fans. I bet you we get more on only fans than they do on NBC. All right. We'll be right back. Hold on. Next one. All right. So what's this next? Oh, here we go. I, you know, okay. So I talked to my friend. I get panicked when I, uh, can't get people's names right. Like we all do. We all get a little bit like, oh, you know, and I, I know I what always, you're talking about, Sam. I, I always think about uh, before I say this person's name, what flashes through my brain is Kareem Abdul Jabbar. <laughs> it's three names. It's three names. All right. And so that's the first three that, and I go, that's not her name. Kareem Jean Pierre. All right. I don't think I'm alone. I think everybody in the room relates that. So Karine Jean-Pierre has been in the news as press secretary. Uh Uh-oh. I think that's a mistake when the press secretary is in the news. So um, let's see. Let's see what this first thing I have here. Oh, this is right back. I have a special guest. Before I begin, I have my special guest, Dana Eagles, here today. She's an author, bitches. You've seen our last comic standing. Lots of great stuff. She's sitting in with me for these segments today. Hey, Dana, how's it going? Going very well. All right. Thank you for showing my book. I know. A guide. You're an author. I love this book. Go to it's a book I read. <laughs> All right. So here's Kareen. Let's see what she has to say. I want to take the opportunity to, to lay out uh, what how diverse the president's cabinet has been, how diverse the president's administration has been. Diversity. Uh, the cabinet is majority people of color for the first time in history. Oh, my God. The cabinet is majority female for the first time in history. Take a that. majority of White House senior staff identify as female. Forty percent of White House senior staff staff identify as part of the racially diverse communities and a record seven assistants to the presidents are openly LGBTQ plus. So again, this is something that the president prides himself on, uh, that he ha- actually has taken action to show uh, the diversity of this administration. Okay. Isn't that great? All that diversity. Oh, it just Having makes me a pride parade every morning walking into the office. <laughs> right. It's like, oh, that diversity. You know, he likes having all those women on staff. No kidding. <laughs> More to sniff at. That's the diversity. <laughs> All right. Ridiculous. So, also, I feel like people are always like, well, you know, if you have women in office, you know, we wouldn't have wars and we wouldn't have this. And I'm like, no, we could be as complete assholes as men are. You know, uh, you yes. be just as corrupt as they are. Oh. Just give us a chance, please. Well, that's why I, I love pro-war diversity. Yes. I mean, that's that feels better. Yeah, you know, it's like like war with a hug. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, Jean-Pierre, that's funny that she says that she was asked a question this week. And, you know, you already know that she's a champion of diversity. So here we go. Uh, This was uh, er, I I believe this happened on Monday. Is the president uh, annoyed, frustrated uh, with Marianne Williamson for jumping in the race ahead of him? Did he want a clear field to run? Uh, against the Republican nominee in 2024. Just not tracking that. I mean, if I had a, a uh, what is it called? A little crystal ball. It's a, a little crystal globe ball. here. Crystal it's a crystal, crystal ball. ball that I can tell you. But I, I, I ball. imagine eight ball, whatever. <laughs> if I could feel her aura, I, I just I just don't have anything. I just don't have anything to share on that. 
I'm, oh, gosh, you guys are making me laugh now. She just laughed at her own joke. Yeah. I mean, first off, there's somebody in the background who's, <laughs> I think that was Kamala Harris. I think that I think I'm pretty sure that was OK. I, I think I know that cackle anywhere. Um, but what's really interesting about Jean-Pierre, let me show, show the clip, is that here's this woman that just touted last week about the wonderfulness of diversity. Whoa. Someone with a vagina has talked about running for president uh, that we, we're not even I don't have a crystal whatever. So what is it? Do we celebrate diversity or we it, it just in certain terms? I think I'll uh, see now I'm going to be nice and fair. Uh, Carl Young says I'd rather be real than good. Rather be real than good. I don't know which one pays more. So <laughs> once I find out, I'll tell you. Um, I think it's just one of those where it's like. She forgot the word like we all do. Like I'm trying to think of like what's the word for that heroin ball. Like that's all I'm thinking of. And uh, is that the eight ball? The one that you shoot up? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. The eight ball. I don't know. What do you okay. mean? The eight, magic case, eight ball. Well, you know, Misha, you know, oh, she's yeah. been. Yeah, she has a history she, she of knows. peddling um, drugs. So, but I think she just forgot the word and then she just, that was her recovery. And we all talk live. We all know, you know. I mean, I'm sure I've put my foot in my mouth five times Never. already. Yeah. Never. Oh, we'll give it a little more time. All right. If you want to see my stand-up special, become a member at jimmydark.com. It's only $10. And come see our live stand-up comedy in Los Angeles, Palm Springs, Milwaukee, St. Paul, Honolulu, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Coho's, New York, Hartford, and more. Mm -hmm.